Hi everyone, I'm Will Bedford from Fracture Sounds and today I'm going to walk you through our new library, Hemisphere. Hemisphere is an electric guitar library with a real emphasis on soft, gentle, cinematic playing. So let's just jump in and I'll show you how it sounds fresh out of the box. This is the default patch that you get when you load the instrument. So let's just dive in and I'll show you how the library works. You'll see, as with many of our other libraries, we've got the layer mixer, which includes atmosphere layers, and the, the raw layer, which is the guitar sound on its own. Um, but we've also got a tab here for guitar tone. So I'm going to start here, and this is where you set up the main guitar sound that plays through the raw layer. So first here we have the guitar tone type menu, and that's where you'll find all of the different guitar sounds that we've created. And that's through a combination of different performance techniques. So some of them are finger picked, some of them are using a plectrum, and some of them are harmonics, uh, played on different models of guitar as well, and also through different amp settings and effects and pedals and that kind of thing. And I'm just gonna solo the raw layer for now, and I'll come onto the atmosphere layers a bit later. So I'll start with the first one, which we've called clean. So I'll skip through a few of these, but um, there'll be a separate video which has all of the presets that you can listen to if you want to hear all of the different sounds the library can create. So I'll just move on to Crystal. This one's quite interesting. And moving on, Delicate. Moving on, we have Girthy. And then let's try Sparkle. This one's really nice. And let's move on to Twang. This is one of my favorites. This is a Telecaster played with a pick. And then we've also got some harmonic articulations. So glass harmonics is quite nice. And then just for comparison, let's try the girthy harmonics. So a little bit more driven, a little bit more beefy. Uh, warm harmonics. So as you can see, we've got a nice wide range of tones to choose from here. So now I'm just going to pick one of these. Let's choose Girthy and I'll show you the rest of this page. So we've first got some basic low cut and high cut filters, uh, which is really useful for um, taming the low end a bit because some of these tones are quite beefy in the low end. So if you just want to ease off that a bit to help it sit in a mix a bit better. And you can do that. We've also got a high cut if you want the sounds to be a bit softer and warmer. And next we've got the timbre shift control which allows you to change the tone even further. And what this is doing is triggering 
a sample which is higher or lower than the key you're playing and then it's tuning it back to the original pitch and this is what it sounds like. So you get a brighter sound when you turn it up and that, that's actually triggering lower samples and tuning them up. And then if you turn it down, that's triggering higher samples and tuning them down. So you get a much darker sound when you turn it down. And next to that we have the air control. And this just adds a little bit of space around the guitar. And just to show how it sounds, I'm going to bypass the reverb here um, so you can see what the air is doing. So it really just pushes the guitar back in the room and it makes it sound wider and fuller. You can really add some depth to the sound of the guitar. So that's the guitar tone page and this is controlling the sound of the raw layer. So the atmosphere layers here aren't affected by the guitar tone page at all. So if you've used any of our other libraries before, you'll be familiar with our atmosphere layer concept. And what it basically is, is a selection of pads and textures that are designed to blend really well with the raw guitar sound. And we can mute the guitar sound completely if we want. And for the first time with this library, we've created a selection of atmosphere layers that you can load into these three slots. So you get a lot more flexibility with the atmosphere layers than you do on our previous libraries. And some of these just sound incredible. Um, let me just uh, pick a few for you. So I'll just go through these and show you them in isolation. So the first one we have here is the Luma layer. And then Fathom. And then Shard. This one's using reversed guitar sounds. Okay, and then next, the Helix layer. And then the Orbit layer. And then Horizon. Okay, stasis. So a bit more aggressive and grungy that one. And then void. And next we have Astra. This is another of my favorites. It's using harmonics. And it's got a really nice texture to it. And 
And then we have Kinesis. And then Atom. And then Vivid. And then finally, Abyss. So like I said, these can be loaded in any combination in these three channels and they blend really well with the raw guitar in whatever combination you choose, really. And also, the mod wheel can be used to control the overall intensity of the atmosphere layers. So now let's have a look at some of the other controls on the interface. First here we've got the colour control, which allows you to blend between different EQ settings that we've dialed in to really match the guitar. So in the middle position you just get the raw sound unchanged. And then when you lower it you get a, a more delicate warmer sound. And then if you increase it, you get a more bright and present sound. And next we have the transient emphasis control, which allows you to boost the attack of each note. And it sounds like this. And then if you turn the transient emphasis down the opposite way, below zero, it has the opposite effect, so it's softening the attacks. So if I just solo the raw layer for now, then if you turn it all the way down, it has more of a, a volume swell effect, so you can get effects like this. And then on the next row we have the fret noise, and you will have probably heard this as I've been playing. Uh, this is adding those little squeaks uh, in between the notes that you get when you move your hand across the fretboard. And this is triggered in two ways. So by default it's on auto mode, and you have a chance control here. So if you turn the chance all the way up, then every time you release all the keys, it's going to play that slide sound. Obviously it's exaggerated when it's on 100%, but this is the sound you get. And that's got round robins as well, so you're never going to get the same sound twice in a row, so it's quite realistic. And I should mention it's not adding that to every single note, it's only when you release all the keys. So if you play a chord and you release each note one by one, you're not going to get a squeak every time. So it's good to turn the chance down a bit so it's not happening every single time, it's a bit more randomised. And then the other way to trigger these noises, if you don't want it to happen automatically, maybe you want a bit more control over when those noises are triggered, you can switch it to manual and then this red key switch appears. And that lets you just trigger these noises whenever you feel like it. And this is velocity sensitive as well, so you get a bit more control over how loud these sounds appear. Okay, I'm going to switch this back to auto for now. And next we have this lo-fi section, which is actually 
multiple different effects which are combined into this nice, easy to use control. And you hear when I turn that up, we get a bit of noise and hiss coming in. Uh, but this is what it does to the sound. So let's open up the settings here and see what that's doing. So I'll just turn everything down for now. Uh, so first we've got the tape section, which uh, has three controls. When you increase the age, it sort of rounds off the top end a bit and makes it sound a bit darker. The saturation um, saturates it. And then the warble control is controlling wow and flutter, which adds uh, some pitch modulations and makes it sound a bit more like an old broken cassette. And next we have the noise section, which is uh, recordings of three different noise sources. So the first is hiss from a tape machine. And then we have guitar buzz. And next we have the mechanical noise, which is actually the sound of a tape echo machine, which has been mic'd up. So you hear the tape moving through the machine and you hear the motors and the, the sort of whirling of the tape machine. We did a lot of work to remove the inherent noise in the guitar recordings because a guitar naturally picks up a fair amount of hiss and buzz, especially single coil pickups, which we were using. Um, so those have been cleaned up quite nicely. So it's quite useful if you want a bit more of a natural, authentic sound to add some of that buzz back and these other noises just to make it sound a bit more lifelike. And below that we have the speaker section, which is a selection of speaker emulations. And these can work really nicely for just changing the tone of the guitar so some of them are pretty subtle and then some of them are less so and then combining these with the tape is really nice as well and the hiss Let's just go a bit crazy with this. So this main lo-fi knob here is basically the amount of all of these controls together. So when you turn it completely down, you're not hearing any of these effects here. And then as you bring this up, starts to introduce some of those effects and then next we have the echo and we've got a couple of options here first is the tape mode which behaves like a tape echo machine so so in the tape mode you've got the saturation which uh add saturation inside the feedback loop so it gets more saturated as it goes on and then the damping is simulating an old worn out tape so it adds some filtering and then we've got modern mode which is a bit more of a clean sounding echo and you can change the uh, tempo divisions here so it's all tempo synced and next we've got the reverb and again we've got a few options here so we've got room hall plate and shimmer so I'll just briefly play through some of these and these are all algorithmic reverbs so we've got a lot of control so we've got control for size modulation So the modulation is the, the kind of swirly pitch modulations that you hear. 
And the most interesting control here is the fade in control. And this adds a slow fade in to the amount of each note that is sent to the reverb. So if I turn this volume up all the way, it's a very washed out sound, um, partly because the size is on full. But in situations where you might want a really long and dreamy tail, but you don't want the transient of the note to be blurred by the reverb, you can turn this fade in up, and that means that it's only going to add reverb to the tail of each note. How cool is that? You get this really lush, dreamy tail, but without the transients being washed out. And then just to recap, this is what it sounded like before. So yeah, my favorite feature of the reverb is the fading control. And this is something that is only really possible with sampling. You wouldn't be able to achieve this kind of effect with a live recording or with a plug-in after the instrument. Uh, it's really part of the programming of the instrument itself that allows this. And this is what excites me about sampling. It's being able to extend what is possible with an instrument using the technology. And let's try some of the other reverb types. So hall. And plate. And then again with the fade in. And then probably my favorite is the shimmer. And this is a real uh, dreamy, swirly type of reverb. And then I'm going to turn up the fade in time again. So next, let's just have a look at the settings page. So first we have the velocity response, and this is how much the velocity affects the volume of the samples. So with this all the way down, the quiet velocity is going to sound at a similar volume to the loud velocities. And then with it all the way up, the soft velocities get quieter. So you can set this to your own preference. I like it around the middle. And below that, we have the sample start slider. And sample start is a really important control that's often overlooked. And the reason it's so important in this library is because each sample has a lot of information before the initial transient of the note. And we didn't want to chop that off when we were editing the samples. And it's something that a lot of sample libraries do. They, they edit the samples really tightly. And personally, I think it just kills any life that the instrument had. So for me, it's really important to let those samples breathe and let any information that happens before the transient to be able to be heard. Um, so we've given you the option of that, basically. So you can have the sample start all the way and then the notes will be really tight, it'll be really responsive and you can play it immediately. So there's no latency there at all, apart from the latency that's caused by your buffer settings. Um, but if we bring that down, then It's even more noticeable with some of the sounds that were played with a plectrum, so the, the twang sound. You can hear that, that little, the, the sound of the pick just rubbing against the string before it plucks it. And then with all the way up. It's night and day to me. Uh, it makes such a big difference. So what I would suggest doing, if you are quite sensitive to latency when you're playing, is to put the sample start all the way up while you're recording. And then when you've finished recording, turn it down again. And you'll see here that we show you the amount of latency in milliseconds. So you can use that value to compensate for the delay using the MIDI negative delay in your door. So just punch in the same number and it should line up exactly. And next along we have the pitch bend mode. And this is another really unique feature of this library. And it basically allows for polyphonic pitch bend control. And what I mean by that is when you play 
notes on the keyboard and hold them down with the pedal, but you're not actually holding them with your hands, then the pitch bend doesn't have any effect. But the notes that you are holding with your hands will be affected by the pitch bend. So it allows you to only bend certain notes when you're playing. And this is a lot more fun when you've got loads of atmosphere layers turned all the way up. So let's see. So it really opens up a lot of possibilities with the pitch bend control because I find that I don't really ever use the pitch bend control on a lot of sample libraries because um, it's not very useful, for, especially for ambient uh, instruments like this where there's a long decay. Um, so if I put it on standard mode, this is how you'd expect it to behave on any other library. So, so it's just bending everything together and this is a lot less useful to me. So I personally keep it on held keys only mode the whole time. And then next we have the pitch bend range, which controls how many semitones the pitch bend is bending. So you can have it one semitone or put it all the way up to 12 if you really want. And then below that we've got the noise mode, which is controlling how the noise is being triggered from the lo-fi section. So by default it's always on, so as soon as you bring up that control, you're always going to get the noise. But you might want it to only be playing when you're actually playing the track in your door. So you can choose host transport. And then when you actually press play on your door, the noise will start playing. And then when you press stop, it will stop. And then we've also got auto, which is maybe a less useful mode, but this will trigger the noise when you start playing. So as soon as you play something, it will start. And then there'll be a, a brief time delay, then F if you haven't played any notes for a while, it'll fade out. And then we have Atmos mode, which is controlling how the atmosphere layers decay over time. So on Decay Naturally, the atmosphere layers are going to decay over time alongside the raw guitar. So... So you can see they're fading out alongside the raw guitar. But then optionally, if you want the atmosphere layers to ring out infinitely, you can choose sustain infinitely. And then even as the guitar has faded out completely, the atmosphere layers are just going to be there until you release the keys or the pedal in my case. And that pretty much covers it in terms of using the interface of the library. Um, now I'm going to show you a few of the presets. We have over 50 presets in this library. I'm just going to show you a few of them in this video and then there'll be a separate video which goes through every single preset if you want to check out all of the content that the library has. So the presets can be found up here in the snapshots menu and these are also found in the browser on your native instruments hardware if you're using complete control or the new contact 7 browser. So we've divided the presets into four categories. So the first one is basic. And these are pretty much the, the different guitar tones that I've already shown you, but we've put them into presets and we've selected some atmosphere layers which blend nicely with them. So let's just try Crystal. And then Delicate. Sparkle. Let's move on to the atmospheric category. So these are making more use of the atmosphere layers in creative ways and also the built-in effects. So this is called a safe place. alone mm -hmm. 
Cloudwalkers. Distant memory. Uh, nightfall. Broken glass. So this is really making use of those granular atmosphere layers. Really nice stuff. Let's just do one more from this category, warming vistas. Okay, and let's go on to the lo-fi category. So I'll start with Asleep. So you can instantly hear we've got the noise from the lo-fi section. Last September, let's see what this is like. Tender is the touch. And now let's try some of the pads and textures. These ones are just lovely. I think they're really making use of the atmosphere layers and quite a lot of the time the transient emphasis to soften the attacks. They just sound lovely. To glow. Uh, let's try distant galaxies. This one's not actually using any atmosphere layers, it's just using using the timbre shift, the transient emphasis to soften those attacks, and I assume some saturation. Yeah, I've got a bit of the tape effect here. And just... Really nice stuff. Let's try a couple of others. Liquid nitrogen, this is a cool one. See what synapse sounds like. Let's try. 
try one more uh, Whispers from Beyond. So as you can hear, there's so much diversity in these presets and it just demonstrates what's possible with the built-in settings in the instrument. All of these are just using the controls I've shown you today. So that's pretty much it for this video. I am really excited about this library. We've been working on it for a long time. Uh, it's, it's an instrument that I've always wished I had. I play a lot of guitar on my own music and it's quite often this style of ambient cinematic playing. And I've always wanted that sound in a MIDI instrument that I can just play without having to get my guitar out. So I'm really excited that this now exists and I hope you get a lot of use out of it too. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you love this library as much as I do and I'll see you next time.